This is Drom Shekasuto. What is the right approach to believe in the Creator? Because we know that there are many people around the world that who will claim to be believers, true believers. Everyone will justify his way and will praise himself to be the only one that knows exactly what everyone else in the world is supposed to do. And the differences between those uh, people uh, might be so, so, so radical, like one can be Jewish, one can be Christian, one can be Muslim, like, and, and everyone are sure that they're the only ones. And also inside one of those religions you can have so many sections, like in Judaism you have so many ways, you have so many people with so many different traditions and, and way of thinking and understandings. And, those are so like committed to a certain path and learning to rise the world and another person will go and say no you need to go and do it but the dude you need to be a breast level chassid you need to go to the fields you know need to talk to god to speak with him in your own language another person will say in your language in your words god forbid no only to read the verse like everyone will take it to somewhere else so what can we do? Like, how you how you gonna find the right way? What's 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 the deal? What's we gonna do? So, before we're gonna answer those questions, I just want to mention another thing. We see that for more than two thousand years, we're screaming and nothing works. <laughs> That's uh, so. There, there are some lackings in all those ways that are being offered to us because in the end of the day nothing really works completely like uh, you know I remember myself in the beginning of my tshuva when I started to be a, a fresh Baal tshuva so they told me listen if you're gonna keep Shabbat you'll have money with no end the blessing will come to your house. If you're gonna eat kosher, your mind will be pure. If you're gonna keep the purity of the family, go to the mikveh, your wife will go to the mikveh, all those things. So with no doubt, always you're gonna have peace in the house and there will be no arguments, you're never gonna fight and on and on and on. <laughs> if you're gonna learn Torah, your children, and after 20 years of tshuva, I must tell you, like, I'm broke, my wife and I are arguing on a daily basis. <laughs> so like, let's face it, it's not easy, right? So it's like, it's not a, a quick solution. All oh, right, you keep Shabbat, you just don't touch the lights and that's it. Someone gonna put a million dollars every year to your bank account. It doesn't work like that. Like in the end of the day, if you don't have a certain luck, if you don't have the, 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 the motivation to go and work and do things, you, you're not going to succeed. Shalom bayit, peace in the house, it's not something that happens because you eat a kosher steak and not a, a non-kosher steak. It's like it's, peace in the house is a result of long conversations, deep into the night, sitting and talking, caring about each other. Like That's the way that really you, you, you earn shalom bayit, you gain shalom bayit, peace in the house. You cannot just like, all right, I'm going to put 100,000 or I'm going to do this mitzvah, I'm going I'm to have it. No, it doesn't work like that. In reality, it does not work like that. So, in the end of the day, we need as individuals to find a way how really to connect ourselves to our own faith. Now, what does it mean? It's true. For an example, we are Jewish, so we want to keep the, 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 the path of Torah. We want to be Jewish, we want to keep the tradition, we want to follow the rules, of the Jewish rules. Amazing, everything is great, but in which way? In what, like, what's the best way? Should I be Hasid? Should I be Litvish? Should I go to this synagogue, to Sephardi Shul, to Ashkenazi Shul, to this place that is close to me, to that place that I feel a little bit more inspired? Like, many intersections, many options you have in life and you must find one that really gonna answer your needs, that really gonna bring you on track, that will make you happy. Because if you won't be happy in the path that you will walk in, in the end of time, in a certain time, you're gonna back off, you're gonna say, listen, like, why, why do I need to suffer? Like, if it's not fun, so why, why should I continue? Why should I do that? Like, uh, it's not fun, like I'm not enjoying it, like I'm going every Shabbat to the synagogue, I don't like that place, I mean, I'm like I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm praying, like, I'm, I'm not finding myself. So, 
The question is how a person can find true happiness for that purpose of him being happy to continue and not to stop what he started and that he will have the ability to charge his battery on daily basis while he's trying to keep the religion and to follow the rules of Judaism and to do the things that he believes in and not to lose his happiness to find himself inspired and to find himself that he is growing, to find himself that he is succeeding and that he feels satisfied and good with himself in that journey. So first of all for that a person cannot follow the opinions of others. It's true that we need to consult with wise people, it's true that it's a good thing to learn from people with life experience and to learn from the wise, but Another person can never understand exactly what you're going through in life. Another person cannot give you a quick solution, tell you go to the right, go to the left and that's it. Because sometimes you have your own issues, you have certain things that are bothering you. And because that you are bothered with your thoughts, with your fears, with certain pressures that are going through on, on you in your own individual life, Therefore you cannot follow a certain person and to go into his life's patterns. You must find your own path, you must find your own lane to walk in. So one person for an example, he loves sport. Another person he like he has a hobby, he likes cooking. Another third person he loves music. You cannot cut a person from his hobbies and to tell him, no, that's something you cannot do. Oh no, this is not good for you. Because if you're going to cut him from a source of happiness, from a source of satisfaction and joy, if you know that you like to do sport and it gives you life, it gives you happiness, it gives you motivation to wake up in the morning. Some of the reason why I go to school is because I have sports over there. Some of the reasons why I'm going and like I'm, I'm positive about my days is because I know that in the evening I'll have time, I'll be able to sit with my music, I'll have my time to do my own thing. So I'm going to invest some time on learning, I'm going to do this and that because I know that I'll, I'm finding myself in the end of the day. So only you can know exactly what your heart, your individual heart desire. Maybe the things that will satisfy me and I can talk about them for whole days and like are boring you. Like maybe like you're not like you, you don't care about those things at all. They like you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to do that. It's boring for you. And you have something inside of you that is shining. So you are not allowed to drop those things. Those things that you feel that are charging your inner batteries, those things that are giving you the reason to live the satisfaction from life, that gives you the motivation to wake up in the morning and to put more effort into the things that are needed and important in life, are the things that only you are aware of. And you must be brave enough, strong enough to express your feelings and to demand and to claim and to ask for your needs. And not to give up on your dreams and on your hopes. And you must follow your heart in that way. That if you have a certain hobby, if you have a certain talent, if you have something that you care of, that you, you, you find it interesting, you must not neglect that thing. You must not drop that thing. Because that thing is a source of happiness. This is a source, so it's a battery that can give you energy for the rest of your life. Me for an example, when I was a child I was a, a, a professional swimmer. In Israel I was swimming in a team and I was in few competitions. I, 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 I won the first place in, in Jerusalem. I like few of the, I don't know how you say those things in English, back then I was not and today I'm not a, such a sport fan. But in those days I was swimming and like in some of the competitions I won the first place in the Jerusalem, in the, like in the city uh, competition, and also in the, in the, uh, of all Israel, in, 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 in few of the, of the, um, of the, how you say the, in, in Hebrew you say mikze, that like, that you jump, that you do that, like you, you go on, on, on that competition, in that time. How you say that? That the swimmers are like, you have like, you have, like uh, you have different kinds of, of, of ways of swimming and one you swim 100 meter what? Uh, so it, it's like you 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 
You jump to a certain, Opposition. you go like uh, one swimmer will swim 1,000 kids. What? A relay race. So there yeah, sections. So like you, you're gonna go. You jump on something. Like one is going and swimming 100 kilo, uh, uh, meter. Uh, no, I'm saying like every person needs to do like something. You jump now to swim 200 meter butterfly. You swim 1,000 uh, like whatever. It's a relay race. Okay, so that word. Repeat it. That I'll be able to pronounce it. Re what? Relay. R e l a y. Relay. Relay. All right. So uh, in in one of those relays, that you see, I'm a professional swimmer, like I told you. So <laughs> I. I, 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 I won in, in the, uh, like, um, the third, third place I, in, in, in all Israel. So like, I, I was good. I was, I, I was a very good swimmer. So my English is broken, but to swim I know. So when I, uh, when I, when, when I grew up, and one time we went to the, to the Galilee Sea, to the Kinneret, so, and one of my children started to drown. Like something happened and he started drowning in the sea. Like, and it was a very critical situation. He was very far and the waves were very high. And only because of that reason that I had that skill, I was able to swim all that distance against the, the wave and in short time and I saved his life. Now, you can say the Creator saved him. It was a miracle. Thank you, Hashem. And you can praise Hashem for that and for sure. We believe in the Creator and we believe in His private supervision on us and we're thankful for that wonder. But if I wouldn't know how to swim, the situation would end differently. <laughs> it's like both of the things in the same time. The Creator is using nature. Moses opened the sea for Am Israel. Right, it's an amazing thing. But the Creator used Moses to open the sea. It is a miracle. Things like that, that coming above nature are still changing the rules of nature. He used Moses. Moses used his staff. He was praying. There was a miracle. There was a righteous man named Nachshon ben Aminadav. He was the first one to jump into the water. The water stood from both sides and like the, the water freeze, froze like, like, like ice. Like so. so Things happened in reality under the rules of nature, but we believe that the Creator, that He's above nature, He organized all that wonder to take place in that way. But He used certain tools, certain vessels, certain people that were worthy for that thing. We as people, as true believers, cannot leave everything to the hands of Hashem, to the hands of the Creator. We must have our role, like that it's written that the redemption, the final redemption that will take place in the world, will take place by the merit of righteous women. Okay, so there are certain groups of women that are righteous, that are nice, that are good, that are kind, that are modest, that are righteous, and by their effort, by the merit of their work, the world is about to redeem. So they also have the merit for the fact that the Creator will redeem the world. So we are those, those soldiers of the Creator in that army of, of Mashiach, of King David. And we are those ones that the Creator is using to bring the redemption. So how the Creator can use you can use me to bring the redemption only when I'm qualifying myself for that job. Not if I'm waiting for Mashiach to come and all day long I'm burning my time with my iPhones and smoking my cigarettes and that's it. And yeah, when Mashiach will come, I'm going to be redeemed. No one is promising you that you'll have a share in that redemption. A redemption should come to people that are working, for people that are sacrificing, for people that are trying, for people that are being good with each other, that are being nice with each other, that are working hard to be successful and righteous and pure and good as much as they can. And by that they're qualifying, koshering themselves to be those tools, those, those important ones to be in the head of the camp, to be the leader of that generation, to be those ones that by their merit the redemption will take place. How will you make yourself that person? The first thing and the most important thing in that, in that issue is that the person will be a person of truth. You need to be a truthful person. You cannot be a liar. 
Because a person that is lying, he is twisting reality. If I will say that that wall is green, I'm lying. It's true. It's not so important. It's not like I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm stealing a million dollars from something, someone. It's not that I'm, I'm cheating on someone. It's not that I'm doing something horrible. I'm just saying, no, this pillar is green. No, no harm is done. Like, it's okay. Like, it's wrong. It's a mistake. But no, in reality, if you're going to say what the truth is, the truth is that the color of that wall is gray. And that's the truth. Now the Creator, He is the God of truth. Like we're saying, Hashem Elokechem Emet. Your God is the God of truth. And every time that a person says the truth, even on small things, by that he's attaching himself to the truth. Means to the Creator. And when you're lying, so the verse is saying, Dover shekarim lo yikon leneged enav. A person that is lying cannot stand in front of his eyes, in front of the Creator's face. Because the Creator is the God of truth. And His seal is the seal of truth. And as long as you're lying, even on small things, you are separating yourself from the truth. And the truth is His godliness. It's His real existence and being. And when you're an honest person that is saying the truth on your feelings, on your emotions, on your needs, on your desires, on your condition, on your thoughts, by that you're attaching yourself in every aspect of your life to the truth, means to the Creator. And then you become a vessel to contain His light. But when we're lying and we get used to lie, if someone asks you, do, are you hungry? And you feel hungry, but you will refuse because you feel not comfortable eating. <laughs> and now you're going to lie. You can say, no, no, I just ate. But in reality, you're hungry. So you're lying. Even if it's not such a... You didn't hurt no one. You haven't insulted no one. You're not stealing. You're not cheating. You're just lying. Basically, you're separating yourself in that aspect from the Creator. Because the Creator is the God of truth. You can say, I, I will feel better not to eat right now. That's the truth. You can say the truth. You don't need to lie. No, I just ate. Why to lie? Why to lie? Say, I, I don't feel good about eating right now. You don't need to say the truth. I'm embarrassed. I don't feel comfortable. Like you, you don't need to open up if you don't feel like, oh no, saying all the truth. No. You don't need to cause yourself an inconvenience for that reason. No, but stay honest. Stay who you are. If someone is pulling you and telling you, hey, I want you to come and learn. Can you come and do this? And you don't feel comfortable about it. You need to be able to say, I don't feel comfortable about it. I have other things and they're very important to me. You don't need to justify yourself to no one. A man of truth, a person of truth is a person that is able to express his truth. The truth is not only the divine truth, the holy truth, the hidden truth of the righteous ones, the secrets of Kabbalah and, and mysterious wisdom, an ancient one from the, from the ancient archives of, of, of Eden. No. The truth is that you will be honest and be truthful. That when someone talks to you about something, you will be, you're going to be a person of truth to express your feelings, your emotions, to say what you really think about that topic. And if you don't know, that you'll be able to admit and to say, I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't know yet. In the beginning of my tshuva, in the first days that I was dealing with those thoughts of maybe to start being observant and keeping Shabbat and all those things. I remember that one day I took, I had a Jeep um, and, and I, I took it like everyone knows that when you have a Jeep you spend a lot of time in the, how you say, uh, in, 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 with the mechanics in the garage. So like the, it's part of the hobby, you need to, to like having greasy hands, it's part of the job. So I was spending many hours in, 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 with the mechanics. So in one of the days, one of those mechanics, he asked me, do you think that one day you'll do tshuva, you'll be religious? And I said, I don't know, maybe. It's an option. And in those days, I was not observant at all. I was not keeping Shabbat. I was not, do I was not celebrating the holidays. I was not eating kosher. I was 20 years old and I was not religious in no way. 
but he felt from the conversation that I am coming closer to that thing because I was thinking about faith, I was searching for spirituality, I was in the direction but I was not keeping the obligations, I was not keeping the mitzvot. And when he asked me, is there a chance, I asked myself, is there a chance? And my answer was, yes. If I'll find out that it's true, that is the right thing to do, so why not? Yes, maybe. And I was able to say it. And then he came to me after a few minutes and he told me, I want to tell you that I really appreciate you because you still don't know that one day you will do tshuva. But I see that. I saw many people in your situation. You're on the highway. You're doing tshuva. You're going to be religious. But you were a person of truth to admit and to say that it's an option. Many people deny. Many people are afraid to say. Many people are not willing to admit that they are changing, that they are feeling certain feelings. Many people are embarrassed to open up. And he said, I, you impressed me with that. I gave him something by that honesty, even that I didn't mean to do anything special. I was just honest. When you are a person of truth, you're already achieving huge things in your journey. There's a story on a person, and that story been revealed to the world, when that person, after he passed away, he came and told his story, what happened with him in court in heaven after, after death. And he told that story to one of his relatives, and one of his relatives told that story, and today it's a famous, famous story. That when that simple person passed away and went to heaven's court, they welcomed him with great honor and respect. There were thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people accepting him and honoring him and opening the path for him, whatever, all the honor that, was, that, that he deserved. And he was a very humble and simple person and he didn't know why, what's all the fuss, what's going on, like for what? And he started asking, like what, what? everyone are calling him Harab, welcome Rabbi, welcome to, to, you, to your heaven, to your world to come. And start showing him, those are your houses, those are your lands, those are your properties, those are your lakes, your springs, your like what? houses and thousands of lights or whatever and like he's saying like are you sure and they ask him are you are you ploni ben almoni is uh, like that's your name or uh, is that your father like yes okay so yes all of that is yours and like I, why based on what like what have i done like i they asked him, you don't want it? He said, no, like maybe I do, but, but, but I, I don't want to take anything that does not really belongs to me. So they told him, you have thousands of students that are testifying on you, that you helped them and saved their lives and brought them up on the path of truth. And because of you, they were serving uh, the Creator with honesty and with good attributes. They were nice and kind and like the, you helped them to improve in many ways. And he said, no, no, now I know for sure that it's a mistake. I never gave one class in my life. I was not a rabbi. I never taught no one. I was never teaching no one. I haven't done those. No, that's for sure. Now I know 100% clear it's a mistake. My, my, my ID will approve it. It's not me. Like you can check my, my, my history. It's not me, 100%. So they told him, okay, can we call the students? He said, yes, of course, like if, if I'll know them. And they brought thousands of people and all those people are saying, oh, Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Umori, Shalom Aleichem Rabbi, thank you Rabbi, everyone. And he's like getting like panic attacks, like what's going on? Like it's not me, I'm like I, I had never seen that person in my life, I don't know him. Him I know, like he was my neighbor, like, but I, I never taught him anything, like we never spoke, like what do you, what do you... And everyone are coming and saying, yes, he's the one, because of him, because of him. And then he said, okay, I, I, can I hear the stories? Like, can, can I have evidence for those things? Like, why? Based on what? We never spoke. And one of them said that one time both of them came to, into, to get into the grocery store and he was with a, with a, with a baby um, cart, you say? And, and wanted to come in and he ran a long distance to help him and took this cart with him and helped him and in the store he asked him, Are you, do you need something else and can I do something for you? And he was helpful, he was friendly and he said that his behavior was so impressing, impressed me so much 
that it changed my life for good. Like I saw that that's the way that a person should behave and it changed me. And another woman came and said that she was walking with her uh, shopping baskets and she was suffering and things fell and he ran and helped her and picked up those things and helped her to carry those things till her doorstep and, and helped her with that. And another person came and he let me pass him in line because he saw that I was in a rush. And another said, and everyone are coming with their stories that he with his good manners with the way of the land in a simple way that his behavior was straight and honest, that he was an honorable person, that he was a kind person, he changed the life of thousands of people. And they all considered as his ch children and students just because that in reality he changed their lives without being a famous rabbi, without giving lectures uh, in, in Batei Midrashot, in yeshivot, in, in synagogues, without going and crossing the country like crazy me that is going and talking in houses and synagogues around the world. Without all that effort, he was a lighthouse to his surroundings just by being an honest and nice and kind person. So from that we can learn how important it is for the person to be who he really is and to try to find ways how to keep all the things that we feel that we should but in a happy way based on our understandings and things that you don't know you must ask and things that you don't understand you must learn and you should do it for yourself for your true happiness that you will find the answers to the questions that are bothering you that you're not just going to go like an animal in the herd that is walking to wherever they lead her. You need to find your path, to find your own direction, to do things that you want to do with your life. And only in that way you'll find true satisfaction. Now what's the problem? Many people are afraid of themselves. Many people are afraid to make changes in their lives. They're afraid to let their feelings be expressed. Why? Because they're afraid that it will take them elsewhere, that it will take them out from religion, that it will take them out to foreign places. If I'm going to start listening to music, whatever, maybe it's going to take me. That fear is coming out of a very wrong mindset. Because that you don't recognize how good you are, truly, how really good and holy you are. This is why you're afraid that if you will walk somewhere else, you will drop the good things that you received until today. But in reality, if you will follow your heart, you're just going to find out who you really are. And you're going to find more powers to be a better person and a nicer person and more positive. And you're going to find how good you are and how great you are. Because our souls are so holy and so pure. Those are portions of heaven from above. It's written that the Israeli souls are built from godliness. It's chelek eloka mimaal. It's portion of God. The Creator's light Himself, His own light, is installed inside of us. If you're alive, where do you have that life from? The Creator, He is the only real form of life. He is the source of life. He is Chei HaChaim. He is the life itself. He is the only life that lives. And He lives inside of animals and He lives inside of fruits and, 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 and leaves and trees and, and flowers. He lives inside human beings and He's also the sparks of life in water, in fresh air, in fire, in earth. He's the life of this creation. And if you're alive in any aspect of your life, it's the godliness that takes place in your body in that moment, in that time. And we just need to connect ourselves to that source of life. What brings you life? What makes you happy? What brings you to the right path? And with honest um, way of observing on life, checking yourself in an honest way, you'll see that you desire good. You don't want to be an enemy. You don't want to go to fights. You don't want to argue. No one enjoys those things. A real honest person, he finds his way of 
to do good in the world and that's his desire just when we are being forced not to be who we are and, and, and to go in different directions, we become negative and angry and frustrated and then we start fighting with the environment that is forcing us and blocking us and doesn't let us be who we want to be. But in those borders of holy, holiness, in the borders of Kedusha, a person can find himself and can also find outlets to express himself and to be that shiny and beautiful and colorful soul that he is. Because every individual, like that, our, the shapes of our faces, our portraits are different, our voices are different, our fingerprints are different, also our spirits are different. And like that you bring your face to wherever you come, you bring your spirit as well when you come. When you arrive to a certain place, you don't need to bring only your body. You need to bring your soul. You need to bring your spirit. If you're a funny person, you must allow yourself to be funny. If you're a thinking person, you allow, must allow yourself to think. If you like music, you must sing. You must feel that flow of, of, of rhythm and beat. And to live with that wave and that, that rhythm of your life. And, and, and to flow with that because that's who you are. Means that's who God made you to be. That's who He wants you to be. If you will allow all your qualities and treasures that are hidden inside of you to be expressed, so the glory and the beauty and the greatness of the Creator will shine the world through you and you will become a lighthouse to your surroundings. May the Creator give us the strength to believe in ourselves, to rise our self-esteem to a very high level, to know that we are all holy and we're coming from a very holy and important place and that will be people of truth that are going to represent the light of the Torah and, and Judaism in a positive way, a welcoming way to welcome many others to walk in that path of truth and we'll see the face of Mashiach together with healthy eyes, with a happy heart and a wishing soul. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you guys. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.